Hello from my basement in the Windy City. We're going to try a fun experiment today to make a coat rack out of concrete and copper. As we're going to take a cheap 3D PVC tile that only costs a few bucks on Amazon, we're going to combine that with some spray foam we're going to use underneath to support the PVC tile, and then we're going to pour the concrete into it, and hopefully that concrete is going to take on the shape of the 3D tile. Let's get going. I had been wanting to use some cheap 3D PVC tile as a concrete form for a while, but its flimsiness was a challenge. I ended up figuring out you could use great stuff, or here I'm using Loctite's insulating spray foam, which costs a few bucks a can, and spray it underneath the PVC tile to support it. it the foam expands and becomes fairly strong, strong enough to support a thin tile, and so it worked really well. I'll put some links to the tile and the foam in the description. Then I used a turkey cutter to trim up the excess foam from the edges of the tile. You could probably use the turkey cutter for the entire project. However, I decided I, I would just make things a little quicker and went over to the table saw to trim up the edges uh, so it was a perfect square. Then I stayed at the table saw to cut down the four sides for the form. So we got the base of our form done, and it looks good. Uh, so we're gonna make a tile. Uh, we're gonna do it one half inch thick, which is really cool. Something you can only do with GFRC. If you use standard concrete, tried to make it one half inch thick, it would just fall apart, it would crumble, it would break, it wouldn't work. So to make it one half inch thick, we're gonna put half inch MDF down as a separation, just to hold this while we make the form. We're gonna put on our sides, then, we're going to super glue these sides in place. And we're gonna flip it over and do our silicone on the insides like we normally do. I think this is gonna be cool. I'm excited to see how it works. So let's see what happens. The taller sides leave a gap under the bottom of the form to allow for the copper pipes that are embedded in the concrete to step through. Then I used paste wax to prep the form for the silicon. Check out my old videos for more info on that. Then I cut the copper pipe to length. I was going to just insert uh, pieces of pipe straight into the form uh, so that they would be embedded in the concrete when I poured the concrete right over them. Uh, these would then serve as posts that I could attach my hooks to when I created the coat rack. After inserting the copper pipes through the form, I used some super glue to hold them in place so that the concrete wouldn't push them down when I poured it. Then I took my black silicone caulk and ran the bead around the edges and used the cake fondant tool as I've done in the past to get a absolutely perfect silicone edge also put silicone around the edges of the copper pipes to pre prevent any concrete from seeping through and creating cracks. Next, I went to create a French cleat. For this build, I wanted to embed screws straight into the concrete that were holding the French cleat pieces in place. So to do this, I drilled through the French cleat and screwed longer screws that extended through, then created a bridge out of some scrap wood that held the two French cleat pieces right so that the bottom of the pieces was level with the top of where the concrete would be and the screws extended into the concrete so they would be embedded when we pour. I'm excited, I've got a new product to try today. It's by Fishtone Concrete, it's their GFRC mix. And this is a just add water GFRC mix. It's something that I've been talking to them about for a while, I'm really excited that they put it together to make something that is easy enough that anyone can make this, the Weekend Warrior, the DIYer. Uh, and it's just as easy as any mix you buy at Home Depot to use.
For each 50 pound bag of the GFRC mix, you're going to use one pound or around 8.2 pounds of water. So it's pretty easy to adjust the mix. Here I had a 10 pound batch of face coat. So I just divided by five and got about 1.6 pounds of water. And some of you had been asking about the possibility of pouring in the face coat and brushing it in instead of spraying it as I did in some of my past videos. So I decided that I would do a video where I brushed it in and you can definitely get some good results. Uh, you'll see later the face coat came out nice and clean. Uh, however, the edges weren't exactly perfect. So I think there are benefits to spraying uh, if you can. But if you can't, GFRC is still definitely an improvement over your standard run-of-the-mill concrete mix. I waited about 45 minutes for the face coat to firm up so that the glass fibers in the back coat wouldn't push through. And once it did, I mixed the back coat. And for this, I was doing uh, about 25 pounds of back coat for the two uh, coat racks that I was making. Now, I did one in white. So I just did it, uh, this plain mix uh, with water and then added about a, a pound of glass. If you wanted a stronger mix, you could go up to a pound and a half of glass fibers. And uh, it comes in pre-mixed bags if you order from Fishtone, uh, which is nice. So I placed uh, the back mix by hand and it flows really nice as you'll see, uh, especially with the darker uh, coat rack it, it really flows and levels out on its own really nicely um, and I just add to some uh, cheap pigment actually I just tried some of the Home Depot Quickcrete uh, pigment which actually, which actually worked okay uh, for just doing a single batch of dark mix and not really caring if I had to color match uh, so I just sort of worked it around uh, again, with the back mix, you don't have to vibrate. It's self-leveling, uh, and it includes some admixes that prevent uh, the bubbles from forming, and uh, it just really works nicely. So I covered it, let it sit overnight, 24 hours later, it was ready to demold. Now this wasn't 100% necessary, but I wanted to get the backs nice and level, and so you, you essentially use the sides of the form as a level uh, to sand down the sides. Uh, and I just used the diamond sanding pan for that, and then continue to take the sides off the form. I want to take a minute to remind you, as always, that if you enjoy my build videos, please click the subscribe button below the video so you can get notified about all my future builds. And I'm also posting quite a bit on Instagram if you want to see how uh, my projects are progressing before the build videos go up. I also use some concrete sealer, which again isn't necessary, especially for a coat rack, but I like the look. Now here's a little trick I learned that I didn't know before. Now to clean up the copper pipe before I put the pieces into the coat rack, I just used some nail polish and it took all the paint and whatnot off of the copper pipe and worked really well to clean it up. And then I went about designing the hooks and various pipe workings for the coat racks and I just used some super glue to attach the copper since it didn't really need to be watertight or sealed uh, and super glue did the job very well. As for the particular shape of the copper pipe, well this is really up to you and design aesthetic. I played around with this for quite a while trying different shapes. Uh, the one tip I had when gluing them is to attach the pieces that go into the embedded posts last. And in fact, some of them I didn't even need to glue in because they just sat nicely uh, after I glued everything else up. And then it was time to hang a few things and test it and it held the weight just fine. Now this is a really fun project and a cool experiment. If you like it, leave a comment, let me know. Let me know if you have ideas how to improve it or do variations. I always love to hear those. And that's it for now and I'll see you next time.